This is a regular meeting of the Council of the Township of Montclair. Notice of this meeting has been provided to the Montclair Times, the Herald News, and the Star Ledger. Notice has also been posted on a bulletin board in the municipal building. Roll call, please. Present. Mayor Spiller. Present. Councillor Baskerville. Present. Councillor Herlock. Present. Councillor McMahon. Here. Councillor Russo. Present. Councillor Schlager. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I'm also going to ask that when we finish, we have a moment of silence. We have two memorial proclamations this evening, one for Wally Choice and one for Gene Clark. If we could just remain for a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You got a short term memory, don't you? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'll, we'll come back to public comment. We have presented the minutes of September 4, 2018. Any additions or corrections for those? I'll move it. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, I think we'll do the do the proclamations uh, first. I think we'll. Um, is anyone here for Mr. Choice's uh, proclamation? I haven't noticed that they okay. have. Then would you like to move that one, Councillor Basquiat? Um, yes, it gives me um, great privilege to uh, move the proclamation in memoriam for Mr. Wallace Choice, Jr., better known to all of us as Wally Choice. And I so move. Second. So, all in favor? Aye. Uh, proclamation for Home Corps' uh, 30th anniversary. Uh, your oh, board member as well, yes. Yeah. But I don't think there's anyone. Um, is there anyone here from Home Court to receive the proclamation? Hmm, I'm looking for the proclamation okay. myself. Nope. Thank you. This proclamation is congratulating Home Corps, Homes of Montclair Ecumenical Corps, known as Home Corps, on its 30th anniversary. Um, among the uh, outstanding things that Home Corps has provided for our township is um, consistent, um, affordable housing, one of the only nonprofits to only do that in our community for many, many years. And we've had a great relationship. In addition to that, they've got um, a program to um, encourage reading and reading literacy with Glenfield School. They also are doing a, a shred fest, I think it's coming up um, in the beginning of October that they do annually. So they provide um, a lot of support in other areas in, in our township. And um, their 30th anniversary is coming up and we're extremely honored to have our Lieutenant Governor Sheila Oliver as the keynote speaker. And um, we'd like to encourage you all, if at all possible, to come out and support this outstanding 30th anniversary. Um, and I move the proclamation. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Councilor Spiller, would you like to do Israel? Sure. Israel Kronk, formerly of Montclair. <laughs> <laughs> Heard you've been giving him some heat, Mayor. Uh, <laughs> see it's never going to go away, Israel. Just oh, understand that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and my colleagues. So, Israel. Whereas, Israel Kronk, Executive Director of the Montclair Center Business Improvement District, the BID, is leaving his position in October to undertake a not altogether new pursuit to market and brand a developing company. And whereas, formed in 2002, the BID has brought uh, the downtown community, nearly 600 businesses and properties, in a one-mile stretch of Montclair's downtown business district along the Bloomfield Avenue corridor together to work on common goals by providing a single point of contact for many issues and a voice in town hall improving communications with municipal departments. And whereas the bid works to build community in an area 
by promoting sidewalk sales, music and performances on the street, celebrations throughout all the seasons. Under Mr. Cronk's leadership, which he assumed in 2016, the bid expanded its lineup of public events that included uh, Women's Empowerment Week, Small Business Saturday, the Crane Park Market, Oktoberfest, which was excellent, by the way, the other day, um, events which drew thousands to the area. Working closely with the township officials and the bid board staff, Mr. Cronk also initiated streetscape programs such as parklets, plantings, banners, wall murals, much more. Whereas during his time in Montclair, Israel served this community with dedication, creativity, and enthusiasm, forming partnerships with Montclair State University, Montclair Public Library, YMCA, Partners for Health, uh, Save of Essex, uh, further to bid the mission and its agenda. He has earned the respect and regard of the township leaders, business owners, and operators, and members of the civic and charitable organizations. Now, therefore, be resolved that the mayor and council of the township of Montclair express our thanks and gratefulness uh, for his service to our community, for the many contributions Israel Kronk has made, and we wish him well and, can you, and continued success in his future endeavors. And I just want to say, Israel, I've watched as you have engaged uh, business members, yes, but the community as a whole with the bid and done so many great things for our township. Uh, you, I know I speak for all of us when I see you, will, you say you will be surely missed, but uh, we wish you the best and we look forward to you know, not running out of town too soon, Mayor, I'm sure, <laughs> yeah. but not, we thank you for your service and congratulations. Thanks, Israel. Uh, this is a nice surprise. I'm glad I, I, I prep every day and I saw my name on here. I said, oh, shoot, I better shave my head. Um, but, <laughs> but uh, you know, this is, a, this is a wonderful experience, a life-changing experience for me. I just want to thank you so much for allowing me the opportunity to, uh, to serve you and serve this community. I had uh, loads of fun. I learned a lot. Um, I definitely learned that uh, there are no losses, there are just learning experience, and there are no wins, there's just growing experiences. So I think uh, with the learning and the growth that I've had in this position, I think I'm going to take that on uh, for a long time. And I just want to thank you all again, and also the community uh, for allowing me to serve you um, in the way I could. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor. Can I just say one thing? Mm -hmm. I just recently came across another proclamation that honored uh, Mr. Kronk back in, I believe, 1991 or so when he graduated from high school <laughs> and his wrestling record was 34-0. and 0. He was the state champion in New Jersey. Oh. One in t and the council, this council, of course, mm -hmm. the previous one, honored Mr. Kronk with a resolution. And uh, I thought that should be noted. Oh, all right. <laughs> True, right? <laughs> Council Russo? Yeah, I'm, I'm reading. Uh, is there anyone here from the Vision Loss Alliance group? Uh, if not, I'm just going to read in brief the uh, proclamations recognizing Blindness Awareness Month and the 75th anniversary of the Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey, which is holding an event October 25th, that's around my birthday, in Randolph. And whereas blindness is a profound vision loss affecting more, more than 130,000 adults over the age of 35 in New Jersey, National Eye Institute, part of the National Institute of Health, projects an increase in blindness. More than two-thirds of visually impaired adults in the United States over age 65, more than 20 million Americans age 40 and older are afflicted with cataracts, the leading cause of blindness. It's a great need to make residents of Montclair and across the state aware of this vision impairment issue. Demand for services is growing. The 75-year-old Vision Loss Alliance is looking to expand services related to education, independence, teaching adult skills to overcome the challenges of sight loss. Vision Loss Alliance promotes emotional and physical wellness in friendly, supportive environments through its kind program. The Council and Mayor of Montclair recognize the importance of Blindness Awareness Month and congratulations to the Vision Loss Alliance of New Jersey on 75th anniversary. So I just want to say, uh, I moved this and I'm sure everybody seconds it. I, I have a problem with my own vision. I had cataracts removed two years ago. I still have a problem with glaucoma, drops, 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 and sometimes I can't see. I'm starting to not remember, right, Mayor? 
but it's a, a question of making sure you take care of your site early on. Make sure you get checked for pressure that could lead to glaucoma. And eventually, if you're having a blurry vision, can't see in the distance, that's cataracts. I got them removed. I can see everything far away, but I can't read close up as much as I used to unless I have the glasses on. So I've had a corrective surgery done, and it's important that you look to see the ophthalmologist, not just optometrist with the glasses, but ophthalmologist, get these pressures checked, make sure you fight glaucoma and cataracts, which can impair your vision to the point of blindness. So do that, and remember this is the month that we're looking at recognizing the uh, 75th anniversary of the Vision Loss Alliance Group. No one's here for that, are they? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Yes, I really would like to do Gene Clark, and I want to ask if anybody from the family is here tonight. The Clark family? Yeah. Well, I'm just going to read this briefly, and we'll hold this for her family, but... Uh, the Council of Township of Montclair notes with sadness the passing of lifelong Montclair resident, active community volunteer, and civic leader Gene Clark. Gene's name is synonymous with recycling. He was responsible for Montclair assuming a place in the forefront of that endeavor in 1973. She organized a group of volunteers into an enterprise became Montclair's recycling department. She also was a driving force in the adoption of the Mandatory Recycling Act in 1987 as an active member of the New Jersey Recycling Forum. Jean Clark was born in Montclair in 1923. Graduate of Wells College, Jean also received a master's degree in philosophy from Mount Holyoke College. Jean Clark was a key presence in Montclair, contributing her time and talent to many volunteer activities throughout her life. She served, on, with, she served Montclair with dedication and distinction. She was active in the Montclair Organizations for Conservation, the Bird Club, the Montclair Hawk Watch, the Essex County Solid Waste Advisory Council. Served for over 30 years as a board member of New Jersey Audubon Society and the League of Women Voters and the Association of New Jersey Recyclers. Jean was the recipient of many awards, including Recycler of the Year, Recycler of the Decade, yeah. New Jersey Department of Energy, and the New Jersey Pride Award in the field of environment. In addition to nature and the environment, her other interests included music, photography, and service to her community. Be it resolved that the Mayor and Council of Montclair express the thanks of a grateful community for the life and contributions of Jean Clark and extends its sympathy to all who cherish her loving memory, especially her niece and nephews and host of friends. So uh, again, I move it, and I'm sure we all agree, and uh, Jean did so much during the time she was serving Montclair, and we must know that her sister, Betty Evans, was a councilwoman or a commissioner at the time, right, Mayor? Mm -hmm. Commissioner at the time of Montclair. First woman, I think, on the council or commission at the time. That was... Uh, Betty Evans. But Jean and Betty were great sisters who contributed so much to this town. We really feel the loss of Jean Clark, especially in the environmental area of preserving our community. Thank you. And do we vote on those? I'll, I'll move on both of those? Yeah. Consent. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, okay. We'll now open the meeting up to public comment. Anyone wishing to address the council at this time, we'll be happy to hear from you. Try to limit your comments to three minutes. And uh, when you're done, uh, please uh, write your name and, and the uh, and the register there. Chief. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. My name is uh, Tom Russo. I'm the former Chief of Police and Director of Public Safety for the Township of Montclair. A while back, I uh, wrote this piece that I would like to take the opportunity to share with you this evening for the Montclair State University 150-year celebration project. And I think it's appropriate that I read it and share it, like I said, with you this evening. It's entitled, Save Our Italian Heritage. Save Our Lady of Mont Carmel Church, Images of Montclair's Fourth Ward, Long Gone. Montclair's Fourth Ward was a section of the town which at the time, 1940s, was predominantly Italian-American and Afro-American neighborhood. There were black and white families who shared the same struggles and dreams. They were hard-working people and goals, the goals that they were trying to make and reach for their families during hard times. The Fourth Ward was a tough neighborhood, and even today is considered a tough area of policing. There are plenty of opportunities 
for someone to get into trouble if trouble was what you were looking for. I often visualize the old Fourth Ward looked like when I was growing up. I can hear the Italian melodies playing in the background while my mind pans around the neighborhood starting on Pine Street. I see Our Lady of Mont Carmel Church, an Italian parish, celebrating the feast of Our Lady of Mont Carmel and St. Sebastian, the patron saints of Cerami, Sicily, the birthplace of my ancestors. The patron saint of uh, uh, my, my ancestors, excuse me, and, and my, uh, my roots. The streets are lined with decorative stands selling their wares, including an abundance of Tanyan specialties and food. Overhead are the colorful red, white, and green street lights with the band playing and fireworks exploding in the air. As the statue of St. Sebastian and the Madonna are being carried down the church steps led by our pastor, Father Bozio. As the American and Italian flags are being carried down with the statue of the saints, they are met at the base of the steps by the young children, the girls dressed in their white communion dresses and veils, and the boys dressed in their altar boy tunics. I can still remember the old neighborhood, starting with Nick Soda's chicken market, Joe Scroy's ice house, Doc Casabona's drugstore, Falat of Filiacci's fish market, Sam's pizza parlor, Adorno's meat market, D'Alessandro's bakery, Albie Cohen's Jewish Deli, Joe Loop's Barbershop, Russomano's Deli, Kajano Liquor Store, Joe Misch's Gas Station, Mr. Fortunato, Fortunato's uh, Sausage Shop, Al Happy Day's Diner, Mr. Honorano's Shoe Repair, Bullanello's Esso Station, Jimmy the Pedder selling produce from his truck, and Frank and Ann Ice, ice Cream Parlor, and Chris the Greek Bakery, Claremont Yumber, Lumberyard, Bliss's Brookie, Bookie Joint, <laughs> Mr. Riccardi's Cleaner, St. Sebastian Club with their bocce courts, John Blondell Coal Yard, the Erie Lockerana Railroad, and last but not least, Bobcat's Butcher Shop. That was the site of my first homicide as a rookie police officer for the township of Montclair. I remember the many brick tenements with their fire escapes in the well-kept uh, wood frame homes. Most of these homes had gardens growing tomato plants, basil, zucchini, and squash, with many of these homes having their own fig trees and grapevines. You could tell when it was winemaking season by the empty grape crates piled up in front of the homes awaiting garbage pickup. Finally, I can see the trolley cars running on Bloomfield Avenue and the old B uh, Bay Street Station with Tony's Brook and the railroad yard running alongside and underneath them. All I have described is, is in a six block area is gone, except for Our Lady of Mont Carmel Church, which was the anchor and the memories of the great era of the history of Montclair. I would like to take the liberty of stealing and changing the lyrics of a song made famous by Frank Sinatra. What is Montclair's fourth ward? Uh, to, by, uh, what, what is Montclair's fourth ward to me? A name, a map, or a flag I see. A certain word, democracy. What is the fourth ward to me? The house I live in, a plot of earth, the street, the grocer, and the butcher, and the people that I meet. The children in the playground, the faces that I see, all races and religions, that's the fourth ward to me. The place I work in, the worker by my side, the little town, the city where my people lived and died, the howdy and the handshakes, and the air of feeling free. The right to speak your mind out, that's the fourth ward to me. The things I see about me, the big things and the small, the little corner newsstand or the house a mile tall, the wedding in the churchyard, the laughter and the tears, the things that have been a growing for about 150 years. The town I live in, the street, the house, the room, the pavement, the city, the gardens all in bloom. The church, the school, the clubhouse, the million lights I see, especially Montclair's Fourth Ward. That's Montclair to me. Thank you. Well read, Tom. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Um, that's going to be a hard act to follow, believe me. Uh, Kathleen Bennett, chairperson of the HPC. Mr. Marzullo asked me to speak tonight about the significance of Mount Carmel Church. And I just want to refer to a letter that I wrote for, from the HPC in, on July 28, 2016, 
to the Most Reverend John Myers urging him and the Catholic Diocese not to close the church. Um, and, this, and the reason being is that Mount Carmel is an extremely significant building, Mount Carmel Church, within the Fourth Ward. Um, that many of you might not know, but the architecture, which I've done a lot of research on, um, is considered to be uh, Romanesque Gothic. It's the only type of building of Romanesque Gothic within the township of Montclair. Not only that, but it was designed by a, a man who was born in Italy and, and received his architectural um, training and degree from NYU. So we've got this, this um, international and national significance within the township. Uh, it, it has all the earmarks. It's considered a key building in the uh, Pine Street Historic District and also a very significant um, a significant building and church in, within the Fourth Ward. So as the Fourth Ward is losing landmarks, about to lose maybe another landmark, I just want to make sure that uh, or let everyone know what the significance is to this particular building. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And if, if, if you would allow me, Mr. Marzul, I just wanted to read a letter. Please. Um, this is uh, addressed to Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, uh, and it's dated August 2nd, 2018. Uh, historic designations, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church. Dear Mr. Marzullo, this correspondence is to advise of the local, state, and federal historic designations of Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, located at 94 Pine Street and identified on the tax maps as Lot 27 and Block 4208. The subject property is located within the Pine Street Historic District. The district was nominated as a local landmark historic district in 2005 and codified by the Township Council under Ordinance 05-59 and Montclair Code 3414B1B. Uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church is identified in the Township's 2005 nomination report as, only, as one of only two key buildings of the 100 lots surveyed for the pr preparation of the report. In addition, the Pine Street Historic District, which includes Our, Our Lady of Mount Carmel Church, is also listed on the New Jersey Register of Historic Places, ID number 1560, and the National Register of Historic uh, Places. Uh, should you have any further questions, please contact me at the Planning Department. And this is signed by Assistant Planner uh, Graham Petto. So uh, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mayor and Township Council, I come to you tonight as president of the St. Vito Society. Who we've done things together in the past with the sister cities and everything else. But most importantly, um, just a little story, and thank you for the letter, and it's about Mount Carmel. And after the unification of Italy in the, uh, in the 1870s, it was clear economic troubles plagued, plagued Italy. With little but the clothes on their backs, many ventured to Fourth from Aquilone, Calitri, Cerami, Lacedonia, and hundreds of other little villages throughout Italy. They came to New York, to Newark, to go to a new growing town built on the hill, Montclair, incorporated in 1868. Montclair needed workers to dig water, uh, dig water lines and sewer lines. As the 19th century came to a close, the Italian immigrants had settled in two areas of the fourth ward of Montclair in the small section of Forest Street. These immigrants wanted a church where they could feel at home and where they could maintain and practice the religious customs of their native land. In 1807, Father Paul Lisa arrived to Montclair to serve the Italian-speaking community. Forgive me. This, he immediately initiated a fundraising campaign to build a church. The name Our Lady of Mount Carmel was adopted from the Mutual Aid Society, Madonna del Carmine. Although the church building was not yet completed, Father Lisa celebrated the first mass on Sunday, September 8, 1907. By the end of 1937, permission was granted for a new church, a hall, and a rectory uh, by the Archdiocese for the new church. Antonio and Catalina Carnevali sold the property to the church for one dollar. 
On January 8, 1939, the church was dedicated. The church has three societies. There's the St. Sebastian Society, St. Donato Society, and St. Vito Society. They're the religious groups of the statues that are in Mount Carmel. Um, together, they work with the community outreach program of Mount Carmel Church. It's a very active community affairs uh, founded by Monsignor Capizelli, who was chaplain of the police and fire department of Mount Clare. As well as the Lions, as well as the Lions Club, a director of the Union Development Corporation, responsible for con constructing 87 units uh, at Union Gardens, 128 units at Lackawanna Plaza Apartments, and the one closest and dearest to his heart, the six-story um, first Montclair House. All these buildings in the vicinity of, our, of the church. In the past 112 years or so. Um, there have been times of great change in the world, in the church and even in the parish. Our Lady of Mount Carmel originally established to serve the Italian immigrants, now serves as, as a racially, eth ethnically, and economically diverse community. A community drawn from Montclair, Upper Montclair, Glenbridge, Bloomfield, and other surrounding communities. The people who, who created and continue to create Our Lady of Mount Carmel Parish have accomplished so much in the last 112 years. But what's important here is that you see even when the Italians came here and how things have changed. Now we have a Spanish communion, a community coming in. Uh, Mount Carmel serves them all. A community outreach program today works with the police department and the Salvation Army and the gifts for Tots at Christmas time. Uh, Mount Carmel gives donations to the, uh, to the first Mount Clare House and, and food drives. And, and also uh, to Tony's Kitchen. Th th there's just so much that can go on, and there's mo much more thing that we can do. But what is happening in the Fourth Ward, as, as Chief Russo said, was everything is going away. At what point do we value money or big dollars over people's needs? If we are a welcoming community in Montclair, then we together, as we have been, and, and the township has been great at it, we can work together to make, uh, bring other programs to Mount Carmel. As far as doing a meal service at first once a month and then probably every other week. Uh, to bring a Spanish mass to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Anything to help the community. We, we can't take it away. Because, because if, you, if you value those millions of dollars over people's lives, you might as well be 13 pieces of silver. Thank you. If I may say something, uh, Tom, I think you missed Fusco Construction, but a very good list. Uh, and you also both forgot the Irish. My, my father grew up on Clover Hill Place, and I, uh, my three children, uh, first home was on Grand Street. We spent a lot of time in Mount Carmel and in the neighborhood, and I, I fully support uh, the uh, Mount, Mount Carmel, and I hope it does uh, stick around for at least another 100 or 200 years. And, and I would like to see, you know, do what all, all I can do, and I hope the council will join me uh, in what we can do. Thank you. Um, in the letter that was sent, it, I just, um, for clarification, does this include the church and the rec rectory and any other buildings on that lot, or is it just specific to the, the church? Because it says, you know, one building, and um, I'm just thinking in terms of you know, going forward, what, what the ramifications might be if it doesn't include preservation of the other buildings as well. Uh, I, I don't have the answer to that. Maybe. If I might say, um, they're all within the Pine Street Historic District, and so all the addresses are significant to the Historic District. They're all included. So all the block and lot numbers. If you look at a map of the Pine Street Historic District, you will see the rectory, the build, the uh, church, 
and the building next to it are also included. Okay, so when it says that that's one of the two key bu buildings, it well, does the key, key, the key building in North Detroit, but those are the different categories within an historic district. So key building is the highest, the most important building. Do you know offhand if the mini AUC school um, is included in there? Because I also know that that has um, strong history with the Italian families at a time in Montclair, as, as we've heard so eloquently um, about, where people were trying to segregate the Italians and the blacks from the greater white population in the Montclair township. That school was built specifically so that the Italians wouldn't be allowed to go to um, school with the white children. And I'm, so I'm, do you know if the... I believe that's Lucy? the other key building. Okay. Thanks. Also that, Palladium O'Connell and the, the Congress mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the directory. It's all one of the... Okay. Great. No, this is terrific, and thank you so much. Just want to ask if, if I could, because Kathleen's still here, then Minnie Lucy and the uh, church, they're protected then. Are they, I mean, our interest is in preserving that church structurally, and then as Raphael said, we want to preserve the activities and the whole community that we've had there for so many years, but the physical church, is that protected by these designations? The, the greatest uh, protection is within the local designation. So within the local designation, if someone were to buy it and come forward with a, a proposal to knock it down, if, there's the, you know, if the diocese sells it, we're just talking about the church and all the, you know, the accessory buildings, they can divide up the, the lots and the deeds, it's up to them. But it would come before uh, uh, HPC, and we would have to make a determination and give our recommendation to the planning board. And you say, you know, that's an ongoing, that's within our ordinance. Because I can certainly send it to you. Yeah, I, want to more about, I want to protect the physical church as well as protecting the parish. Yeah, the HPC can only deal only deals with the exterior of buildings. It doesn't do just for you to know, it doesn't do it. It has no jurisdiction with the interior of the buildings. But um, as I should have said before, all of these buildings are are important because of the community and the people that they serve. So a building is just a building. You have to, you have to, you have to, you have to have it has to oh, that's a very good, good point. The building's just a building. <laughs> but that building is a, that's a symbol. <laughs> you had a Raphael had somebody else. Yeah. No. Mr. Spivey. Good evening, Township Council Mayor. Um, <clears throat> my name is Reverend Michael Spivey. I'm a, a fourth generation uh, minister from the town of Montclair. I, I grew up uh, in the fourth ward, and I was invited by my brother, Rafael Marzullo, to um, piggyback upon the support about Our Lady of Mount Carmel and what it means. And I heard a couple of statements. Uh, Councilor Baskerville made a statement, and I want to reiterate that uh, Ministry, when we think of ministry, first of all, let me say this. People people always say separation of church and state. I really don't believe that because there is a, a natural intertwining between the two. That's number one. Number two, I want you to understand that ministry is not a church thing, a building thing. Ministry is, in fact, a people thing. And when when the considerations about the, the parish of Our Lady Mount Carmel come up, and I've been hearing a lot about it, I do not think that, and I may be wrong, but I don't think that enough attention is placed upon what that building does in the community in the greater community uh, as i stated ministry is not a church thing it's a people thing and what i can tell you is for years and years and years going back to i heard about the chicken the chicken store all kinds of things this is a community here in montclair and it seems to me that it's turning a little sideways if you will away from being a community of people all I want to say is that we are ourselves at the Citadel of Hope Church, which started in Montclair, is in Bloomfield, and is trying to get back into Montclair. We are 100% in support of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And I would stress and say to you as council members, it would behoove you to maybe try to get in partnership with the many ministries in Montclair, because there are at least 50 ministries in the township of Montclair. And the ministries, I believe, are the lifeblood of this township. 
Uh, I know several people that are, are that are counselors. I know several people that are here. As I said, I'm a fifth generation resident of Montclair. Uh, my family goes back to 1906 at St. Paul Baptist Church on Elm Street. Um, it doesn't seem like there's enough attention being placed on the importance of relationship when we're talking about uh, destroying a, 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 a a historic church that still does unbelievable things within the community. Frankly, it doesn't matter to me or, or Ralph or several people I know in the council whether you're red, black, white, green, or brown, but what I do see is an influx of people in, that are coming into our community, and don't get me wrong, the fabric of this community is fantastic in what it's drawing people in. However, what we need to understand is this is still Montclair. And we do things a certain way in Montclair. And we can move ahead with the times, but I don't want us to lose the flavor of Montclair. And that's people, no matter what color, no matter what financial status, we are still together. And I'm here 150% in support of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We will be partnering together, and hopefully we will be gathering a group of clergy to assist us in trying to assist protecting the legacy that is in the Pine Street area. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Scott. Uh, anyone else? I, yeah, Council, uh, thank you. I just wanted to, um, <clears throat> one of the first meetings I had uh, when I came to town two years ago was with Mr. Uh, Scantleberry, and uh, we talked about kind of unifying all of the, the business districts in, in Montclair, and uh, so I wanted to introduce uh, you guys formally to Rhea Lowe. She is the president of the South End Business District, and I wanted to uh, just kind of uh, formally introduce you to her, and uh, maybe you could say a couple words. Sure. Good, Good evening, everyone. Um, so... I was elected uh, December 2017, and congratulations! Uh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't realize what I was doing. But no, I'm kidding. no, it's um, it's a challenge. But my first goal this year is reorganizing, getting the, all the businesses back together, and cleaning up the South End because there are a lot of comments I've read myself from the residents, and we want to make it a welcoming environment for the residents, the cu cu clients, the customers to come in and I would like to walk down the street even feeling good, you know, mm -hmm. going to work. So that's the first goal, bringing everyone together. We've been hosting a couple events. This year we've had Earth Day uh, where we were working on beautifying. So I tied in, we tied in all the beautification of getting the plants out there. There's the bright yellow pots you'll see along the south end if you start driving around. Uh, we're working on getting plants in there and some more events. So that's what we're doing so far. Thank, thank you very much. I'd love to meet each each I'd just like to um, keep the thank good work. you very, very much, and I really enjoyed working with you and appreciate so much. You just came right in and a wealth of ideas and um, someone that was willing to take on the challenge. And I know there's been a void for a while, I think, from about... 08 until the time that you came in terms of somebody willing to put in the time that it takes to create a successful um, business district. And so I really appreciate you and will continue to work with you um, whenever I can. And thanks for changing your meeting time so that I can get <laughs> to your meeting. Thank I you. appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Rhea. And thank you, uh, Israel, again. Appreciate it. Anyone else? Uh, yes. Um, well, it's just funny how Providence puts you in a certain place at a certain time. I, I was here on other business, but uh, I know my name is Joe Ferrara. Uh, my family's been in town since 1908, and I, I know what the uh, church meant to my, my grandfather and his brothers. And uh, even I, I, f I found a box of letters in my, in my father's basement maybe eight years ago that my grandfather wrote. Uh, from the Battle of the Bulge back home and they were actually addressed to my uncle care of the church wow. Because at that time he didn't know whether their business which was at 110 Pine Street uh, Was going to be able to maintain itself at the time because my uh, grandfather and his two brothers were serving um, 
in addition to owning an auto body shop, I'm, I'm a professional singer, and I can tell you that the first time I ever sang in front of people was in the basement of that church. Wow. <laughs> and probably 1977 when they were still having the, uh, the feast before it kind of faded away. So from my own personal experience, and again, um, I did most of my uh, uh, Catholic uh, education at St. Pius X in Montville because my family was living out there at the time. Uh, the church is a big part of my family's history, and I'm sure, uh, I mean, I'm the only person from the younger generation speaking here today. Maybe if they were more aware of it, I certainly wasn't aware of the fact that they were seeking uh, some type of historical designation, and I think that should happen. Make it a, make it a museum to the Italian-American experience, whatever, but I, I think it would be good to designate that place as a, a place of importance, because I know it meant a lot to, to the older people in my family. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, anyone else? Okay, I will um, close the public uh, comment period. We're going to get a presentation from our CFO, Ms. Rao. While, while she's getting ready, I should note that you might notice that John's not here tonight. Um, John got got married on Saturday, on Sunday, yeah. and uh, so his uh, he and his wife Kanisha, um, I'm sure, are off doing better things. So, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he got married on on Sunday over in Nutley. Twenty yeah, third. Yeah. So congratulations to John. I'm sure you're listening to this broadcast. Yeah, no doubt. Without question. All right. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Councilwoman. Yeah, Councilman. I, see I can't really see that. Can you see now? It, it seemed to be more clear when. I think it's warming. Light off and, yeah, but I mean, I don't know if other people. Okay. 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 Good evening again. So, I am here today to report to you about the township's recent bond rating and the bond sale, and also I'm going to report to you about the township's overall debt status. So first, the bond rating. So on Wednesday, the rating agency Standard and Poor came out with our report, rating report. So I'm very happy to announce that we are once again awarded the AAA bond rating. This is the third year in a row we are awarded this highest bond rating. So if you recall, back in 2012, our rating was a double A minus. So we have come a long way. This is a big leap. This year's report is especially strong because they gave us a two-year outlook period. What that means is the rating agency, Standard & Poor, thinks that it is not necessary for them to reassess the rating for the next two years. This is because they feel they have enough confidence in our financial position. Because we have high liquidity, our cash position is very strong, and we have a strong budgetary flexibility wherein our fund balance is very good and our budgetary performance is very good. We keep increasing the fund balance every year. So when these rating agencies give the rating, they give the rationale on the basis of which they awarded the rating. So the rationale they gave is sound financial policies and procedures. If you remember last year, that's in July 2017, we, this council, adopted two important resolutions. The first one is establishing the township's debt policy. What this resolution did is it, it it's, it's formalized the township's commitment to reduce the debt. So according to this resolution, we are required to reduce our township's debt at least $2 million every year. And this resolution also set a goal 
for us to bring down our debt to $170 million by the year 2019. Today, I'm very proud to announce that we already achieved that goal in 2018. Mm -hmm. So currently, our debt position is $168 million. So the second resolution is also a very important resolution. This is establishing the township's fund balance policy. What this resolution does is it is not allowing the township to anticipate in any year's budget more fund balances revenue than the amount it generated in the previous year. So what it does is it makes sure that the fund balance never goes down. This is what the rating agencies really like, strong reserves. And it also gives a good budgetary flexibility because of these reserves. So in 2010, just to put things in perspective, in 2010, our fund balance was just a million dollars. In 2018, it is a strong $12 million. And in 2011, the, the township financial position was not so good, so when they needed to do, you know, a retiree payouts, they had to go out for emergency appropriations. We are, we are right now, we are in such a strong position, we can take care of all our needs. Our reserves are strong. We'll never get into that kind of situation. And not only that, we have other reserves. We establish a snow reserve, you know, that can be used for snow removal, storm recovery, and we also have the accumulated absences reserve to take care of all our needs. So another rationale they gave is the strong budgetary performance. So the Finance Committee where Mayor, Councillor Harlock and Councillor McMahon said, we meet every two weeks, and there they regularly monitor our budgetary performance. They, they monitor our revenues, our, our expenditures, and they, we discuss the, they monitor the capital projects, um, the overall financial situation they regularly monitor, and we also discuss the long-term plans, short-term plans, and set some goals. Um, these are the reasons that the bond agencies, they award this good, strong rating for us. And one more thing, yeah, achieving this uh, AAA rating is not any easy task. And retaining is, is not an ordinary task also. So it's very easy to lose the rating. We have to be continuously focused on the finances. Uh, otherwise, it's very easy to lose track and uh, lose our reserves and lose our rating. And now, to the bond sale. So on Thursday, the township, we sold um, $14.3 million worth of bonds. Uh, 9 million of general improvement, 2.3 million of water utility bonds, and uh, 3 million of school bonds. And the results are phenomenal. The, the interest rate we got is really unbelievable. We got 2.368% on 10-year general obligation bonds and 2.34% on school bonds. Yeah. And the number of uh, banks and the financial institutions that participated in this auction is a lot. It is actually very fun to watch these <laughs> banks and their <laughs> institutions compete, compete to buy our bonds, to lend us at uh, that low interest rates. Mm, when the auction starts, generally it opens up for 15 minutes. Every time the lowest bidder's position changes, they automatically open up for another, extend it for another two minutes. Uh, in a good bond uh, sale, uh, sometimes once or twice it extends. But for our bond sale, they extended 10 times. Yeah. It's really fun to watch that. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, popular. Popular. Excuse me, Maja. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
what did we perform in relation to the rest of the state? I'm coming. So rest of the states, I think we are the lowest this year, so for lo least interest rate. I'm still gathering the data, but I think we are the least interest rate. So uh, see here again, what this AAA rating means in mo monetary terms. So two days before we sold our bonds, another North Jersey municipality sold their bonds. So the, the interest rate they got is 35 basis points higher than the interest rate we got. <coughs> so they are a double A plus community, we are a triple A. There it goes. So that 35 basis point difference for this amount of bonds, the 14 million bonds, is like $40,000 a year, which is, uh, um, for the 10 year bonds, it's about 250 plus thousand um, dollars. Um, if it is, if these bonds are like a 30 year bonds, the, the, the savings is like $1.7 million. Just that 35 basis point gets us. And just imagine, extrapolate it for the $170 million of bonds that we have, the debt we have, it is like $500 savings a year. That is 500,000, sorry, <laughs> half a million dollars. <laughs> so it's a lot of money. We can do a lot of things with that. So here we are, when uh, in 2012, when we started, our total debt was, when this council started, the total debt was $223 million. Now, here we are at $168 million. This is a reduction of $55 million in seven years. This is a significant achievement. I don't know if any other New Jersey municipality ever was able to reduce the debt so fast, so much. This is very significant. You know what, it helps us to use those additional monies to do projects, to do whatever projects we need to, we want to do. So finally, future plans. So these are some grand plans. <laughs> we want to eliminate all our debt by 2030 in like 10, 15 years time range. We want to eliminate all debt. What it gets us is of the debt service, uh, uh, 15 million dollars of additional, approximately 15 to 17 million dollars additional monies will be available to us to do our capital projects, take care of our, our whatever needs we have my Instead of paying debt service. Explain a little bit. The fifteen million dollars is a current debt, roughly current debt service. Yes. Right. Yes. Yes. So, and again, it's not easy. We just have to be focused. Can, can yeah. you talk a little bit about um, where we might be in the short term on the plan, like w w w with respect to municipal debt and becoming self? Um, looking at becoming self um, fin self financing in a, in a two or three years. Yeah, um, our plan is to aggressively reduce uh, the municipal debt by about, you know, like additional three million dollars a year. If it is, you know, if we are able to do that, then very soon we will be like able to self fund our projects instead of borrowing any things. Like soon, how uh, soon? And so, so the whole point is that we save money when we reduce the debt, right? And because it's such a great rating, we get more savings. So we interest. can so we yeah. can use that money to do these road projects and fix the town. Fix the, the town, yeah. A win-win all around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or, or look at it a different way. We can do the same things without taking Edition. an extra tax point from the taxpayer. Exactly. So five hundred thousand dollars is a tax point. Right. So if essentially we can do the same things, mm -hmm. but just not, we don't need $500,000 or a tax point in order to do it because we're doing it more efficiently. Yes, Very good. exactly. Very good. I think uh, Maja and Bob Benneke uh, need a, a big hand for the great work well, you've I, done. I think the council needs a bigger hand. Without you, I couldn't have done.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's good stuff. Yeah. Hey, hey Stephen, are you going to mention that tomorrow or what? Well, you all mentioned something. Okay. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, hit on Jason. This will probably be my least. All right, you're a good man. Oh, all right, you're good. There's still over 168 million. You make a t shirt. Triple A bonding. Just hope a dog doesn't get hit on Gates Avenue. Like we're the best in the state. Sounds like, yeah. Best in the state. Uh, all right. Leading state. Madam Clerk, pending ordinances. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'd like to note that the three pending ordinances have been published and proposed according to law. The first is an ordinance amending Montclair Code, Chapter 44, which relates to officers and employees regarding the title of township engineer, and that's pursuant to New Jersey statutes annotated, Title 40A, colon 9-140. Thank you. Anyone present wishing to address this ordinance? Uh, seeing no one, I'll close the hearing. Council, roll call. Councilor Baskerville. Yes. Councilor Herlock. Yes. Councilor McMahon. Yes. Councilor Russo. Yes. Councilor Schlager. Yes. Mm. Deputy Mayor Spiller. Yes. Mayor Jackson. Yes. Thank you. The next is an ordinance amending Montclair Code, Chapter 44, Officers and Employees, regarding the title of Purchasing Agent, again, Pursuant to New Jersey statutes annotated, Title 40A, colon 11 9. Anyone present wishing to address this ordinance? <coughs> I'll close the public hearing. Council? Madam Clark? Here. Councilor Baskerville? Yes. Councilor Herlock? Yes. Councilor McMahon? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Spiller? Yes. Mayor Jackson? Yes. The final pending ordinance is an ordinance approving grant of utility easement to the city of Clifton. Anyone present wishing to address this ordinance? Uh, close the hearing. Council? Roll call. Councilor Baskerville. Mm -hmm. Yes. Councilor Herlock? Yes. Councilor McMahon? Yes. Councilor Russo? Yes. Councilor Schlager? Yes. Deputy Mayor Spiller? Yes. Mayor Jackson? Yes. Thank you. We have some uh, resolutions on a uh, consent agenda Mr. items. Mr. Mayor, can I just ask quickly, did we, I thought we had a new a ordinance, D. D. Uh, which one? Uh, D, 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 D was pulled, and we're going to discuss that in, in, in uh, closed session. Uh, that's the, the closed session topic. Gotcha. There's, some, there's some issues there. So that's not on the might, we, might, we, might it come back on the agenda for a vote this evening? Might. Um, Items, uh, resolutions one through not, uh, one through ten for consent agenda. So any reason to pull any of those? Um, just for uh, uh, housekeeping, on item number six, the housing trust fund plan. Mm -hmm. um, uh, on the in the last paragraph, be it resolved, uh, should be uh, approved. Should be approves. Uh, and authorized should be authorizes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, and I will. Uh, I move items one through ten. Seconds. All in favor. Aye. Aye. I guess we do a roll call. Sorry. Yes. 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 Uh, item is uh, eleven is a resolution authorizing a contract for a 2018 uh, tree planting, uh, and I so move. Second. Second. What the question? Yep. Um, is this the same tree service that we're using currently? The 2017 tree program? Yes, ma'am. So we've had some issues with this tree planting company? That I wouldn't agree with. They do a wonderful job. We suffered some trees which 
appear to some trees that that died some trees appeared to be dying but now appear to be on their way back and the company when if and when appropriate will replace the trees as per their warranty so there's a one-year warranty which is what i was told um I, so i hope we don't miss that one year mark okay okay all right thank you of course mr mayor mm -hmm. Uh, Mr. Stafford, where do we stand? I know there were some conversations with the Environmental Commission as well in this body uh, about watering and watering some of these trees. I know that it is guaranteed for that year, as we noted, um, but I know we were looking into some options in terms of uh, either Environmental Commission or the bid was involved at some time. I know we saw some other emails about other watering options. Where are we at with the watering plan potentially around new trees? It's being worked on, and it will be submitted when it is when it is finished. Okay. Um, with that, I imagine we probably want to carefully craft our bids if we're starting to help them with watering you know there's a greater chance of survival hopefully that'll be reflective in the bid costs that we see come back on some of these uh, programs um, secondly I noticed that you know these numbers are for 150 trees um, and I know the Environmental Commission is constantly lobbying especially when we have all these you know micro storms and other major storms uh, in terms of the tree loss we see with the uh, invasive uh, Emerald ash borer that's come in, you know, the number of trees we're losing there. And I know we've got a separate program to somewhat address that. But um, certainly, as I see open pits uh, on some of our streets and some other areas, I'd love to see you work with um, the appropriate department and heads to see if we can plant more trees uh, than the 150 that we have allocated here, which is a budgetary discussion as well. Uh, but certainly, as we're talking 150 trees, I mean, I'd love to see that number doubled um, or, or increased in some way, and I'd love to have a discussion about that come before this body. So if you can have them work on some proposal, and let's see what bids look like for more trees um, and how much uh, significantly more are they or are they not, and incorporating our watering plan with that to hopefully help offset some of those costs. But I'd like to see, bottom line, uh, at least some proposal that we can debate and discuss here for more trees being planted here in Montclair. I think... Uh, at least in the short term, uh, Councilor Spiller, uh, there's there's a lot of money left from previous years where trees weren't. So in terms of actually planting a lot more in a given calendar period, right now there's there seems to be a lot of money. Uh, I'm, I can't remember what the exact amount of dollars were, but it's quite a. It's I remember a him hearing that we had it back you know, if you will. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I think we could through this year, and I'm not sure about next year, but certainly for this year, this is ample money. Then we could for next year's budget. You know, yeah, but, yeah, agreed. I know the conditions weren't exactly right for some of the right. plantings, mm -hmm. and we kind of held mm -hmm. off. But we've kind of, at least mm -hmm. I've, I think I've heard from residents too, kind of seen mm -hmm. that where mm -hmm. there's mm -hmm. a, a little bit of a dearth of these of these trees. Mm -hmm. So I'd love to see us trying to catch back up, maybe see where we are, see what mm -hmm. would be yeah, allowed yeah, budgetarily. Yeah, and also, Mr. Stafford, I know it's some people have asked about it, but even in some of our parks, you know, maybe we yes. can use some of our plantings in parks, and yes. that there are some big trees that have come down, and some yes. other trees, and yes. if we can maybe look for some of these plantings to be part of that, or if there's a more appropriate way. Uh, but just making sure we've got uh, appropriate uh, uh, park plantings in parks as well. Agreed. Thank mm -hmm. you. So Thank you all. A really wet summer again. Yeah. Right. That's <laughs> been nice <laughs> in some <laughs> ways. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, do we need a roll call on this? Yes. 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 Uh, item 12 is a resolution amending a resolution, which I'm not going to read the entire thing. <laughs> but it's, it's essentially uh, some mislabeling of the bonds that mm -hmm. there were utilities and well, water and sewer. Um, basically, a cleanup uh, resolution, and I so move. Second. Uh, we don't need to. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, 13 is a resolution to cancel outstanding checks on the books of the Township of Montclair. Uh, I so move. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Resolution 14, authorizing purchase contracts with Somerset County Cooperative Pricing System. Uh, I so move. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, resolution awarding 15, resolution awarding a contract for 2017 CDBG Lackawanna Alley Improvements and Pedestrian Mobility. Uh, I will move that. Second. Second. Discussion? I do have a bit of discussion. I just want to make sure that um, is this gentleman prepared to actually? I'll defer to the gentleman who spent at least an hour today working with the contractor and securing the information that he needed to be able to submit. Uh, we did get 
clearance from the county at about 5 o'clock today uh, for this contractor to proceed. Uh, he, he says that he's ready to go right to it and do the work. And so, I can tell you to that point, assuming that's tonight, contracts are going to be signed tomorrow, pre-con meeting on Friday. Okay. Do. Uh, do we have penalties in there for him if he does not? Or do we have a date for completion? And, and and the contract and, and penalties if he does not complete by certain dates. Well, actually, it has, I haven't seen the contract yet, but I'll make sure it is there. Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, we normally prepare a contract after the award is done, and I know. Uh, so I'll make sure that there are penalties and that there is uh, a completion date. And I, I, I think, and I think I know, that we, the council, has said that we wanted that to be boilerplate for all of our, this type of work where we have a date and penalties. So I think we did, but I just wanted to No, you, do, you did, and they are. Okay. That's correct. Yeah, that's good communicated to the qualified person. Thank you. And Mr. Stafford, I guess there's a little bit of a theme here, but I guess I've been going to a lot of environmental commission meetings, but I know we also talked about some language in these contracts around damage to trees or anything else. I don't know if it be specific here, but generally to make sure that any damage around the work site, a lot of it with our repaving of streets, uh, that we're mindful of that and it's built into the contract so they're also responsible for some of that damage if it's uh, egregious yeah. so restoration of the site and 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 returning to its condition if there's landscaping and things are usually part of uh, usually i assume part of the specifications and the specifications are attached to the contract but we can make sure and highlight items like that in the uh in the front of the contract so you know it gives it it doesn't change it but it gives it some emphasis thank you Sure. Uh, roll call. Yes. 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 Item 16 is a, is a request to approval of items uh, to be added, uh, budget insertion in the amount of $24,255 from the Governor's Council on Alcohol Abuse and Rehabilitation Grant. Uh, and I so move. Second. Discussion? Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, Billis, uh, Councilor yes, Slayer. Um, thank you, Mayor. Whereas invoices against the Township of Montclair in favor of the following persons to the amount set opposite their respective names have been received, duly audited, and found correct. Therefore, be it resolved by the Council of the Township of Montclair and the County of Essex that said invoices B and A are hereby ordered paid and that checks be drawn by the Finance Department to the order of such persons for the amounts respectively and here and after stated on computer printout attached here to and made a part hereof. This bill list is dated September 25th, 2018 for the amount of $1,687,096.22. And I so move. Second. Second. Discussion, question? Roll call? Yes. 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 Uh, comments, uh, Mr. Karasik? I don't have anything to say Mr. Ganaberry? No reports, Mayor. Mr. Stafford? Mayor, just one thing. The health department is offering several flu clinics at various places in this township and in neighboring townships if you can't make it to one of ours and at several sites. It's obviously a big thing come this time of year. Please check our website for that information and if, avail yourself if you would like to. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Madam Clerk. Uh, yes, thank you, Mayor. There seems to be some confusion about the letter that was sent from the county uh, regarding mail and ballots. Previously, if you wanted to mail in a ballot, you had to request it directly, and you had to do that for each election. Now the process is that if you've ever requested a mail in ballot, you will receive it for as long as you decide to opt out. So instead of an opt-in situation, it's an opt-out. Frankly, it's very confusing to the voters I've spoken to. Uh, I don't know really how to that came about. I don't know really more about it at a meeting I'm having with the county shortly. But uh, everyone will be allowed to vote. No one will be denied. If you do not send the letter back up to the out and you don't do your mail on ballot, you can go to the polls, you can vote, but you have to vote on a provisional ballot. So, as I said, it's a little bit confusing. We hope to get. 
Mayor, I just wanted to ask Linda a question on this because we know people can vote by provisional ballot. That's a paper ballot at the polls, right? Mm -hmm. But having experience with this over the years and my wife working at the polls at uh, Buzz Aldrin School, sometimes there's a lack of enough of those ballots. And I just want to know if you can make sure as our clerk that there's an adequate supply, since this is the year that there's going to be a problem, obviously. One year, actually, they had the ballots at that school, which is the 11th district. They had the ballots for Congressman Payne. You had to vote for Congress in the wrong district. So they had the actual wrong ballots as provisional. So please, just make sure they have enough and that they're the right ballots for the right congressional district, because that can make all the difference in an election if there's mistakes like that. Thank you. Uh, council comments? Okay. Uh, okay. I'll quickly mention a couple. I just want to note, uh, as I said before, uh, when Israel was here and received his award, I uh, did have the chance to head to Oktoberfest. Um, perfect weather. You know, it couldn't have been any better, and it was really hot last year. But this year, uh, it was perfect weather. They had a, the kids zone, which was wonderful um, for everybody to go over there. And then, of course, um, tons of food and everything else. So certainly, you know, kudos. I know the at least it appeared the attendance was tremendous. I'm sure they'll get some, some specific numbers on that, but uh, it looked great, uh, and that was great to see so many people out to enjoy themselves. Uh, so I just wanted to note that. Uh, also, the Mayor wanted to thank you for allowing me to introduce the freeholders at their meeting on uh, September 12th. Uh, that was right here as they move around, and certainly we're here in Montclair to, to speak with residents, to hear from residents, so that was uh, quite an honor, so I thank you for that. Uh, it was good to see Mr. Stafford and so many of my colleagues at the Sem September 11th uh, Remembrance at Eagle Rock on, on September 11th. So we thank um, thank you for attending and w with us and, and also just we all remember uh, those who were lost and their families. So I um, wanted to note that. Uh, and the last thing, um, well, I certainly want to say that uh, St. Mark's, it was nice to hear uh, the new superintendent of schools mm -hmm. uh, as well offer her perspective uh, for those of you who were there. Uh, that was nice to see and her speak about uh, the importance of the diversity and some of the other pieces that, that, that exist here in Montclair. So that was that was special. Uh, lastly, I wanted to announce that on October 10th at 7.30 at the Montclair Public Library Main Branch will be the next Third Ward Community Meeting at 7.30. So again, on October 10th uh, at the Main Branch of the Montclair Public Library at 7.30 will be the next uh, Third Ward Community Meeting. Uh, and certainly, I hope uh, that all can attend. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Else? Mayor, I just wanted to say that last night, and I know you were there with me at the Taste of Montclair, the Montclair Rotary Club had a great event at the Richfield Regency in Verona, right up Bloomfield Avenue. It was a great event. Um, what I, I gleaned there, and I, I got a new, f a new card for Le French Dad, which is the old Petit Paris uh, coffee place on Church Street, number 10 Church Street. So that's still here, but it's just renamed. And the mayor and I were discussing how Trumpets, I think Trumpets was established 30 years ago, Mayor. You cut the ribbon when you were first mayor in Montclair in 1988. So Trumpets is a, celebrating, I guess, 30 years, and they're going to be having this Thursday night a Brazilian night with Bossa Nova. So it was great to see all these different restaurants, all the food vendors, and to have music from Trumpets, which is a great jazz club celebrating with 30 years, so we congratulate them. And, you know, I'll just mention that Councillor Baskerville, our colleague, is going to be honored, New Jersey Federation of Democratic Women, as the Northern Regional Honoree Outstanding Elected Officials Award. There's only three awards, Central, Southern, and Northern, and Councillor Baskerville is the Northern Region Honoree on October, I believe it is the 13th, in Newark at Fernandez Steakhouse, a nice place that my wife's family always went to. So congratulations, Dr. Baskerville. Congratulations. 
Uh, any other council members? Something? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I forgot. Yes, sir. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Just a couple of things real quick. Uh, I know many of us were at the Montclair Art Museum, uh, the opening on the 14th for the exhibit. It was a great crowd, good event, uh, a, another jewel in the uh, crown of Montclair. Uh, on the 15th was the Upper Montclair uh, Business Association sidewalk sale, another successful event. I know many of my colleagues were there as well. Mr. Mayor was fun judging the pie eating contest with you again this year. <laughs> Michael Turgeon won it for the third year in a row, actually, and um, following my colleagues lead the next first board community meeting will be this Thursday September 27th 7:30 to 9 at the Bellevue Avenue library branch I look forward to seeing many of you there 7:30 to 9 at the Bellevue Avenue library I repeat it right Sean is I'm supposed to <laughs> thank you mr. mayor <laughs> thank you sir anybody anyone else yes, yes. council um, and so earlier when we were um, Doing the proclamation for Home Corps, I wasn't certain of the day of the, um, the uh, Shred Fest that's at Eight Hillside um, Square. And so it's on the um, October the 13th, and it's from 9.30 to 12.30. And so there's no charge to you, so you have things that need to be shred, bring them in boxes. I think they're still doing it with the um, AKA sorority. That's what they've been doing with for the last many years. and it's. Um, just one of the many things, again, that the um, Home Corps offers to this community. I'd also like to encourage everyone to please get your flu shots. Um, it is time to start getting a flu shot, and the flu shot can, can be deadly, and nobody likes to get extra shots, but um, they are mandatory for certain age groups, like in the public school district, children um, up to six years of age um, must have a flu shot. So make sure that you please get them. If they don't get that between September 1st and the 20, no, the 31st of December, then they'll be excluded from our schools and certainly attendance matters. Um, but the flu can have deadly effects for all ages. Um, and if you have any medical conditions, heart disease, asthma, anything, then you are um, definitely in need of getting a flu shot. Also, if you're over 65 years of age, then you'd like to consider getting the pneumococcal vaccine because that also um, can cause debilitating illnesses. And um, in this township, we're very fortunate to have a, a health department that does outstanding things. And one of the things that they do is offer um, some of the vaccines for free. So please um, call and find out which one of the vaccines they offer for free. I know the flu vaccine is one that they offer for free. Um, I think for the general public, the first date is going to be on October 4th, between 3 and 5, that's right here. And so, yeah, please get it. Um, even just having the flu can take you away from, from your job and from your livelihood for weeks upon end. There's no way for us to really tell which strains of the um, flu are going to be most prevalent this year. The vaccine that our health department has is a quadrivalent, which is the most effective of all flu vaccines. And you should learn a little bit about the vaccines if you're going to choose to go to uh, some other places. But I can certainly say that our health department does an outstanding job of doing their research, and they have probably one of the most effective vaccines for the flu. So I just want to <coughs> encourage people. Um, and I've seen you know, what can happen when people have not received the flu shot. And, um, yeah, it's not a good thing. So please do yourself and your family favor and get two shots. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I am um, Councilman uh, Harlock and I, along with our town manager and um, Sergeant Lieutenant Ignezo, Lieutenant Ignezo, and um, Carlos Palmeras, our freeholder from Essex County, met um, to about a week and a half ago. We're going to take a long, hard look at the traffic pattern in and around Wachong Plaza. Um, there was a study done. We're going to delve into that study and, and, um, and see what we can do. It's gotten bigger and more um, congested than, than ever um, of the last year or two. Uh, there we also had a Friends of Edgemont Park meeting last week. We're going to have a cleanup day on Saturday, October 27th. Um, we're going to plant daffodils. It seems that um, deer have been eating tulip bulbs in the park. So last year none of the tulips came up. So we're going to switch over to daffodils. 
and we're going to do that on that Saturday. We also, at the meeting, did a little uh, checklist, a little list of um, things in the park that still need to be looked at from the big improvement that we did, but certainly minor things, and we're so pleased with, with the work and, and everything that happened there. We also, many of us, attended the um, opening of the parklet on Walnut Street, which was really terrific. Um, Friday night there was a band playing in the parklet, which was fun to see. And this Friday night at 6 o'clock is the opening of the next parklet, parklet on uh, Glenridge Avenue. So I think it might stop raining by then so we could all go and see that parklet outside. Um, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, also, there's, it was on Friday, there was a pop-up parklet yes. <laughs> on Glenridge Avenue in the same space that's going to be on the right new parklet there. that was for parking day, <laughs> uh, which I stopped by and that was actually nicely done by um, Dresner Robin, an engineering company in, uh, in uh, Jersey City, I think. Um, at Walnut Street, that was very good, and that was, and uh, we should be aware of that Corso 98 and uh, and the Red Eye Cafe, which are directly in front of it or behind it, uh, were, were the biggest supporters and put a lot of the work into it. So uh, congratulations to them. Uh, and, and the one on Glenridge Avenue was across from Mishmish. Mm -hmm. um, on on the um, on Montclair Ambus unit, you should know that um, three of our EMTs and one of our Montclair firefighters uh, are, uh, as, as members of Task Force One, were deployed to uh, North Carolina for uh, hurricane duty for Florence. And uh, I don't know when the firefighter came back, but I know the EMTs just got back after two full weeks of uh, harrowing duty. Uh, you know, it was all flooding. Uh, so uh, they should be congratulated. Mm. Um, and the um, the ambulance unit is having the Duck Derby uh, this Saturday, along with the uh, the Fall Festival at, at Edgemont Park. Uh, it goes from one to four. It's a uh, it's a great fundraiser for the ambulance unit. It's a great time for the kids. There's you know the there's know, hay rides and all kinds of other stuff going on. There's food, and uh, the Duck Derby itself. Is, is at 3 o'clock, and so get your ducks early and cheer on your, your duck, and it's a, always a good time, and it's supposed to be a beautiful day. Rich, can you give the details on that again? The, it's the Duck Derby, Edgemont Park, Saturday, this Saturday, uh, from one, oh. oh, look at that. Here's a duck, and notice this duck says, <laughs> wow. 150th Montclair. Oh. <laughs> so. <laughs> and several businesses around town are sporting with larger ducks. They're doing their ducks. It's, it's, a, it's a fun day, and it's supposed to be a beautiful day. So again, it's Edgemont Park this, this Saturday, the 29th, I believe it is, uh, from 1 to 4 with the Duck Derby itself Thank you. going off at 3. I, I, will, I will name them. Thank you. But you've got to get your ducks in advance. <laughs> get your ducks in a row. Um, thank you all. Um, just uh, one other thing I would like to add. Uh, on September 30th at 7 p.m., the inaugural concert of the Montclair Symphony Orchestra is going to be held. It's an evening with Shakespeare. Um, it starts at 7 p.m. and will be at the St. Luke's Church. Um, if anybody had an opportunity last year to, uh, uh, to uh, attend any of the concerts, they're really just magnificent. I can't, yes, it's hard to believe that, you know, we, and again, in our little town, we have this tremendous orchestra. Um, and that was their rookie year. They their, were fabulous. That, uh, just <laughs> un, unreal. Um, Mayor, can you give the details on that again? Yeah, it's at uh, <laughs> September 30th. September 30th uh, at 7 p.m. at St. Luke's. Thank you. Uh, okay. Mayor, if I may, I forgot something very important to me. Uh, just to congratulate you on your appointment of a great Board of Ed member. Now, the mayor has this power, we know, um, but you appointed a great young woman. Uh, Priscilla Church, whose family I've known for many years, and whose husband, Jay Church, has been a friend of mine for 42 years since we both supported Jerry Brown for governor in 1976, no, for president in 1976. So I really think you made a great choice of a, a vacancy being filled by Priscilla Church. I want to congratulate Priscilla and wish her good luck, and hopefully she'll do a great job. Thank I'm you. I'm sure she will. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Okay, we're going to go into uh, closed session at this point. Um,
whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meetings Act, Chapter 231, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting in certain circumstances, and whereas this body is, uh, is of the opinion that such circumstances probably exist, now therefore be resolved by the Council of Township Montclair and the County of Essex as follows. The public shall be excluded from discussion of and action upon the here and after specified subject matters. The general nature of the subject matter to be discussed is uh, litigation, and we do not anticipate the matters discussed will be made public. This resolution shall take effect immediately. Um, we may be coming out of, of uh, executive session. We will be coming out of exec executive session. It may or may not take action. I can't say, um, but um, uh, but I still move. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So we'll take a five-minute potty break and then. Uh, come